I don't build cutting boards often, but when I do get to build them, I do really enjoy it. And recently I've gotten a lot of questions on how I finish my cutting boards and why I choose the products that I do. So today that's what I want to talk about. Welcome back everybody, Jason with Bents Woodworking. Thank you so much for watching. Today what I'm gonna go ahead and talk about is how I go about finishing my cutting boards. Now I am not a cutting board expert by any means. To be completely honest with you, I very rarely ever build cutting boards and it's usually only if I get a very specific request for a cutting board and it all kind of started one day I was building a butcher block top and I had a bunch of scraps left over and I was like, hey, I wanna build my first cutting board. And I kind of got hooked on building them out of scraps after that. So now all the scraps that I have laying around in the shop, that's usually the cutting boards that I build. They're not for anybody, they're just me messing around in the shop. Perfect example of that is this one right here. And I built this one simply because I wanted to test out and try you know, working with doing different patterns and stuff. And this is actually a cutting board uh, that is going to my sister, but it was just something I made out of some scraps that I had laying around the shop. So. Uh, but for some reason lately, I just did a, a really big cutting board, which was a custom order for a client. And I got a few questions asking, hey, why do you use the finished products you use? How do you finish the cutting board? Why are you doing it? What are the advantages, disadvantages anyway? So that's what I wanna do today is I just kinda wanna talk about the process that I take to get cutting boards ready for delivery or for use. So if you build cutting boards, I'm sure you've probably heard of the company Walrus Oil, which is a new product for me to use. I've used it on a couple of cutting boards now. Before that, I was using the Howard's Butcher Block oil and conditioner, cutting board oil, whatever. You know what it is, it's from Lowe's and Home Depot. I always bought that because finding uh, the Walrus Oil is not as easy, like you have to order it online because none of the places around me sell it. So. I finally decided to go ahead and order it one day, and here's what I'm gonna tell you. I won't use another product ever again. It's, it's really great, it's super easy to apply. I just put on my one thing of oil, or my one coat of oil, I let it sit for you know, 18 to 24 hours, depending, basically I'll do it at the end of the night, the next day I'll come in, I'll wipe it off, and then I'm gonna put the wood wax on. So I'm gonna kinda go over some of those steps today, and I'm gonna do it on this board that's going to my sister, so you guys can see and really see the results because the results of the walrus oil are just beautiful, especially once you put that wood wax on it. So let's go ahead and get started into the process that I take. So I go about my finishing in a few different ways. So I'm obviously gonna sand it. So I ran this through the planer. Everything is nice and flat and smooth. So there's a couple of things that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sand it and I'm only gonna sand it with two grits. I'm gonna sand it with 120 and then I'm gonna sand it with 220. However, before I sand it with 220, I'm gonna do what's called raising the grain. And I'm gonna take a wet, damp cloth, so 120 all over the top of it. I'm gonna take a damp, wet cloth, I'm gonna wipe it over the top so it was smooth. Wipe this over the top, that's gonna raise that grain because you're getting it wet. And then I'm gonna take my 220 and I'm gonna go over the top of it. So I'm two birds, one stone. When I get it wet, I can see if I have a bunch of swirl marks. So not only am I getting to see if I have swirl marks from using an orbital sander, but I also get to go ahead and raise that grain. Now, if I do have swirl marks, which when it comes to cutting boards, I don't find I have that issue very much because typically speaking, cutting boards I'm using much harder wood and they're not as common. And I also, when I'm using my Festool random orbital sander, I don't have my suction all the way up. So I don't get the swirl marks as much. However, if I do get them, usually the 220 is gonna take that out. So I've raised the grain, it's rough again. I'm gonna take it 220. It's gonna take it back to perfectly smooth. This way, when I go and put the oil on, or it gets wet for the first time when you actually wash it, you're not gonna get that grainy feeling. And so the reason I started doing that is because the first couple boards that I did build for my house, I sanded them nice and smooth all the way up to 120, put the oil on, everything was still great. The very first time I washed it, the grain raised because it got wet and it was pretty substantial. So what did I have to do? I went back and I re-sanded all of it, oiled it again, and now when I get them wet and wash them and stuff, the grain is not raised, it's still always smooth. So now I just go through those steps, take care of it so I don't have to worry about that later on. So 120, 
wipe it down with water, check for swirl marks, raise the grain. Once it dries, 220 smooths it out real nice and then it's ready for oil. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. All right, so now I've got this sanded down to 120 and it's super smooth, really nice, but I'm gonna go ahead, like right now I can feel it and there's, there's absolutely nothing, no raised grain, nothing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down with a wet rag and go back and feel it again and it will be a drastic difference. All right, so here it is after letting it sit wet for a while and then it dried, but I'm gonna try to get to see if you can hear it. I'll try to get close to the microphone. If you can hear that noise, that noise is my fingers catching all of the raised grain. So the, the amount of grain that was raised by getting it wet is pretty substantial. Even though it was perfectly smooth after 120, now that I got it wet, it raised the grain. So what am I gonna do to fix it? Now I'm gonna go ahead and sand it with 220. It's gonna take that down perfectly smooth to where all the grain that was raised based off the water is now gone. All right, so sanded to 220. It's super, super smooth, way smoother than it was when I did the 120, obviously, since it's 220. Uh, now that I raised the grain, got rid of all that raised grain, and it's really nice and smooth, and it's ready for me to go ahead and put the oil on it. So that's what I'm gonna do next. When I'm putting my oil on, I like to start on the bottom of it first, because then that way it lets me flip it over and then work on the top. I don't worry as much about the bottom in terms of overall finish. And I, I don't mean that to be in a, in a negative way. It's just that I like to spend more time making sure that the top of any one of my pieces uh, is gonna be nice and clean. So I'll just put a good amount on the bottom, make sure I cover everything. Enough oil for that to sit and seep in. I'm gonna use my little props here. And now on the top, that's when I'll worry about the actual sides of the board. And so with this oil, this oil is a lot thicker than if you were to get like the Howard's um, cutting board oil or butcher block conditioner. It's a little bit easier to work with. Um, the other stuff is just so runny, it just drips right off. This I don't have that issue with and a little bit goes a long way, a very long way. And I feel like it doesn't absorb into it as quickly as the Howard's does. So it, because it's thicker, it kind of leaves that nice, uh, thicker top coat, and it will eventually start to seep in. And then what I do with any excess that I have, I just go down the, that's where I get my ends of my board. Now, one of the things that I love about using this is with Howard's or maybe some of the other products. I can't speak for all of them because I haven't used them But it requires you to leave multiple coats The thing about this is I just put on one coat I let it sit for about 24 hours as opposed to do one coat now and then 30 minutes later Come back and wipe off the excess and then do another coat and 30 minutes after that wipe off the excess So this is done. I will let this sit um, until probably about lunchtime tomorrow and just let that oil soak in and then I'll go ahead and wipe off all the excess and put on the wood wax. So this has had about 24 hours now to dry and let the oil seep in and there's really not a lot of excess left that I need to wipe off, but there is some. So all I gotta do now is just wipe that off and then I'll be go ahead and putting on the wood wax. So I'd like to show you a close up now that the oil's on there and it really did a great job of deepening the color of the wood and it really gives a great look to the maple. But now that I've got all the excess wiped off, I'm just gonna go ahead and put on some wood wax. 
Now, when applying this wax, it's, it's really just like any other type of wax that you would apply to a car or let's say to your table saw or your joiner, it's applied the exact same way. You're gonna rub it on in a circular motion, get a nice coat on it, and then you're just gonna let it sit for about 10, 15 minutes or so, and then you'll come back over the top of it and buff it off. I've got a nice thin coat of wax on it, as you can see. I'm gonna let that sit for about 15 minutes, come back, wipe it all off. Now that it's had an opportunity to dry, I'm just gonna go ahead and wipe off all the wax and be done. So this one's a wrap. I've got the oil on there, I've got the wax on there, and it's good to go. I'm just gonna put some feet on it and be done with it. So that is the system that I take in doing my cutting boards. And again, just to be clear, I am in no way, shape, or form a expert when it comes to cutting boards. These are just some techniques and some products that I like to use. I've had excellent results. So if you have a better way to do it, you know, maybe shoot me a message or leave it down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about the different techniques that you guys are using. But that's gonna be it for this week. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share. Follow me on Instagram at Ben's Woodworking, and I will see you next time.